Good morning. Welcome to Normandy Park, United Church of Christ. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are most welcome here. This morning, we acknowledge the land on which our church stands and the tribes of the Salish Sea that have stewarded this land and called this place home. We recognize that the Duwamish and Muckleshoot peoples are still here and their voices need to be heard as they caution us all and call us to protect our waters, the salmon and the orca. So with that, let us worship our holy God. Good morning. Please join me in the words of gathering. I will read the light print if you'll join me in the bold. This month, we celebrate LGBTQ plus pride as we work toward greater inclusion in every church, workplace, and family. We gather today, we gather today to be refreshed, refreshed renewed, renewed, and strengthened in our faith, our faith and in our resolve, in our resolve for the work, work we, we must, must do together. together. Listen, there is a voice calling us. It is the voice, the voice of our, of our divine, divine Father, beloved. The one who loves us invites us to mingle our voices together. Bring your hopes, expectations, and longings that you have carried with you throughout the week. Here they are. They are. We, we speak them them in, our, in spirit our spirit and with our words. words. Come and worship. Come and praise. Come and pray. We commit ourselves, ourselves to this the sacred time of celebration. Celebration. Please stand if you are able and join us in with in the song No Matter. <laughs>
Let us pray. Creator God, creating still, reveal yourself to us. Rise up in this assembly. Show us a manifestation of who you are. We call forth the knitting together by your spirit of all created beings within the sound of our voices. Reveal yourself to us. Awaken within each one of us. Reach out from within each one of us so that your intangible essence will be felt and known. Reveal yourself to us. You have promised to make yourself known to us, you the presence within, between, and around us. We step into your sacred circle, and we invite you into our lives as we re reveal ourselves to you. We also reach out to you and call upon you. Reveal yourself to us this day and every day. Amen. Yes, I'm 
I'd like to invite Lynn forward. <laughs> We are doing some celebrating today for our Christian education and graduate recognition. So what would you like to do first? Do graduate recognition first, or Christian education first? Why don't we have Lorraine come up? <laughs> I'm going to just sit right down here. So many of you know that Lorraine, um, I have to say Reverend Dr. Lorraine Flight. She's been working really, really hard, y'all. <laughs> and she has finally finished her doctorate of ministry. And the title, if you might remember, of her big project was The Last Word, Prophetic Dialogue for Processing Unfinished Life Tasks and Preparing for a Good Death. Now, it's the perfect title for a palliative care chaplain, which Lorraine is. So Lorraine, on behalf of the congregation, I just have a little something for you as we celebrate this really big accomplishment. And um, she's discerning on how much longer she stays in Seattle. So, you know, send your prayers her way as she does that work, so. Ian, I hate to put you on the spot, but could you come out and help me? So every year we have, um, um, we thank our seat Christian Ed volunteers with a small gift. So today is our last day of Sunday school, and we are here to thank all those who have volunteered during this past year, whether it's teaching or slot cars or leading Bible study or um, organizing the last fall's women's retreat, slot car racing. Did I say that? So each of you have had your personal touch to each story, craft, and event. And uh, we'd like to thank you with a um, $5 Starbucks gift card. So as I call your name, if you would come up and then Ian will kindly hand you a card. Thank you. Um, these are alphabetical by name, first name. <laughs> it just happened to be the way the list is. Um, so the first person is Alice McGregor. And Alice has helped in many ways, but we appreciate her helping as a teacher and helper and being available when I call or contact her. You can stay up here, why don't you stay up here? Um, second is Amy. Yeah. Even though Amy is a paid employee, she's also a volunteer and does a lot of things that she doesn't get paid for. So we're going to, and one of them is, well, Shannon's name comes later, but her and Shannon are very, um, do the Bible and bruise, which is a very exciting time. So if you haven't done it yet, and I know Shannon made a, talked about it last, his last um, sermon, but it's a fun time. Um, Barbara Gregg, who I do not see, is a great help in the teaching and helping. Um, Bob George, I know you're here somewhere. Of course, Bob George is our slop car guy. So he brings in all sorts of people and, and youth, of all, people of all ages, to uh, participate in on his slot car racing, which he does once or twice a month. 
So if you haven't done that before, you might look into it. And there's a, we put up a yellow banner he puts up, who else can climb that ladder um, to let people know when we're going to have slot car coming up. Or you can always call the office and Kirsten will look at her schedule. Kathy Larson, come on up. Kathy Larson is always says yes when I ask her to be my helper when we're teaching. I very much appreciate that. And Dawn's not here. I assume I heard that she's camping. That's what a nice day. Well, not the last two days it was raining, but Dawn is uh, does a lot right at Christmas time when she helps do the gift cards and helps the uh, children, our youth and children, go out and purchase items for Mary's place. So that's a very um, we really appreciate that. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Thank you. See, you're my helper. Um, I, I skipped Kathy Brewer. <laughs> Ian pointed out. I'm not looking very well. So Kathy, again, is another person that when I call her, ask her to be a helper, she always says yes and is there to help and teach our youth. Jill Tiffany, I don't see... I see. Jill Tiffany, come to the front. Jill Tiffany will, anytime I ask her to be a teacher, she's right there and comes willy-nilly. Kirsten Hangelian. Of course, we know that Kirsten's our office manager, but she's also a big volunteer in our church as a member, and she's um, very paramount in our um a pageant every year. So she gets that organized and gets it all going. And she's also very paramount in having our contact with Mary's Place so that we can do volunteer work for them and so many other things as well. Uh, Lee Larson. Okay, Lee Larson is one of our teachers that steps up when I ask her to. Nancy Allen. Nancy, she's one, I think she's the one that, when I send out an email, she's always the first one to respond and a wonderful volunteer. Thank you. Shannon, you knew we were going to get to you. Shannon is our Bible and bruise guy. He, he tells a really good story. So like I said, if you haven't been to Bible and bruise, you, you, you got to You got to come. Uh, Stacy Latimer. Well, Stacy last fall on her own organized our one day women's retreat here at church. And it was very much appreciated by so many women. I, how many people were here? 30 or years? It was, it was a lot, yes. And then Susan Saces, who I don't think is here, but again, she's another person that steps up to teach her help when I ask her to. And then Gwen Ben, well, cause you're a W, like me being a Z, but the other way around. And Wendon again steps up as a teacher or helper or a volunteer, whenever it's needed. So some of these people are on the CE committee and some aren't. And so it, you can be a participant or a volunteer for Christian Ed without being on the committee. So we appreciate all the help of all these people and uh, thank you very much. Oh, wait a minute, I have one more last thing. I have a prayer to say. You are God's servant. He is the one, he is the love that expressed through your heart, the compassion that is revealed through your spirit, the kindness that is demonstrated through your actions, the encouragement that is provided through your service, the blessing that is received through your life. Thank you and God's blessings on you. Amen. And Ian, you get a card too, because you've been a very good student. <laughs> and uh, oh, who else is here? Oh, Catherine, come on up, Catherine. Where I? Where's Luca? Oh, Luca's hiding. Out. Okay, I'm, come on up, Luca. You, oh, you're hiding in the back. Sometimes it's hard to see who's out there. So thank you to our students and youth for helping um, being in class and also for all the volunteer activities that we've done um, both for um, nonprofits and just for fun going to the cat cafe. So thank you very much, everyone. Thank you. And Len, thank you for always 
She's so patient. She, she'll she send email after email reminding us to respond and to always keep us organized. Thank you, Blair. You get two cards, girl. Okay. Just another, uh, uh, one more thing I want to say. Um, we're, after the Lord's Prayer, the uh, youth will be excused to help me set up for the second hour. And I could also use maybe a couple of parents because we'll be hauling a bunch of stuff up from my car. So that would be appreciated. Thank you. So please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Creator, Father, Lord in heaven. Lord in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. thy name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will be done. Will be done. On earth on as earth is in it heaven. is in heaven. Give us this, this day, day our daily bread. Bread. And forgive us give our us sins, our sins as, we as we forgive those, those who sin against us. us. And lead us and not, lead us not into temptation, temptation, but deliver us from, from evil. evil. For thine is the, kingdom, is the kingdom and the power and the, power and the glory, and glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. All right, so everyone that wants to go and help get set up with our Church World Service project, you're invited to go. Hopefully there'll be enough of you to read with me. Okay, prayer of transformation. If you'll join me in the bold print, please. We acknowledge our suffering brought about by queerphobic rhetoric in politics and in many churches. So many of us, so many of are, us sick, are sick, scared, scared dying, or trapped. trapped. <laughs> Holy love, we can't hold this alone. We are discouraged, are discouraged and calling, calling out, out to, you. to you. We acknowledge racism, and the increase in violence toward our black and brown siblings. This is unacceptable, this is unacceptable and, sinful. and sinful. We, we examine, ourselves examine ourselves first for any prejudice, for any prejudice which, contributes which contributes to this, to violence. this violence. God of mercy, change us where we need to be changed. God of the resistance, we stand with stand you before. and with our black and brown siblings, brown in, siblings rebellion in rebellion against racism. against racism. Divine beloved, we acknowledge that this that it is hard to see ourselves as you see us. Too frequently, Too frequently we, we put ourselves, ourselves down or down feel shameful, or feel about, shameful our about our personhood. We malign our excellence and creativity when we try to fit into boxes not made into our shape. Remind us of our goodness when we praise your goodness. The extent of your image is a mystery to us. Help us to see this great mystery in ourselves. Give us strength to claim the sacred in our lives and in our bodies. We become sacred that others will mock us when we accept you made us, all of us, in your divine image. Find us, O oh God, us, oh God, in the midst of our fear. In the midst fear. of our fear. Give us strength, Give to, us proclaim strength to proclaim. We are we made, are in, made the in the image of the, of the divine. Words of assurance. All that the creator made is good. Rest good. assured. Rest the assured. Creator the creator made, made you. you. You are good. We trust God to love us and celebrate us for who we really are. We praise God when we celebrate the diversity of humankind. Let us glorify God by celebrating the beautiful mystery and diversity that we each hold in ourselves. May your mind be at peace, your spirit soar, and your body be elated as you feel holy love surrounding and uplifting you. Please stand if you're able and we will sing the day. This is a day of new beginnings, number 417.
Sharing our sacred story today is from Matthew chapter 9, verses 9 through 13 and 18 through 26. As Jesus was walking along, he saw a man called Matthew sitting at the tax collection statement station, and he said to him, follow me. And he got up and followed him. And as he sat at dinner in the house, many tax collectors and sinners came and were sitting with Jesus and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they said to his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? But when he heard this, he said, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. While he was saying these things to them, suddenly a leader came in and knelt before him saying, my daughter has just died, but come and lay your hand on her and she will live. As Jesus got up and followed him with his disciples, then suddenly a woman who had been suffering from a flow of blood for 12 years came up behind him and touched the fringe of his coat, cloak, for she was saying to herself, if I only touch his cloak, I will be made well. Jesus turned and seeing her, he said, take heart, daughter, your faith has made you well. And the woman who was made well from that moment, when Jesus came to the leader's house and saw the flute players and the crowd making a commotion, he said, go away for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. But when the crowd had been put outside, he went in and took her by the hand and the girl got up. And the report of this spread through all of that district. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, O God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Our theme today in this call story of Matthew and the healing of the young girl and the woman who had been bleeding is mercy. Mercy is defined as and is not, uh, this is not inclus all inclusive definition of mercy, but a few examples here from the Oxford English Dictionary. Mercy is Clemency and compassion shown to a person who is in a position of powerlessness or subjection, or to a person with no right or claim to receive kindness, or kind and compassionate treatment in a case where severity is merited or expected, especially in giving legal judgment or passing sentence. Mercy can also be defined as forbearance, compassion, or forgiveness shown by God to humanity or to a particular person or soul. So those are some definitions. And again, there are more, but for our purposes today, this is how I will be framing my understanding of mercy. 
And as I thought about mercy this week, I couldn't help but sing to myself, Oh, Mercy, Mercy Me by Marvin Gaye, as well as to remember the book Just Mercy by Brian Stevenson, in which he shares with the reader his quest for justice for those wrongfully sentenced to death row. The quote at the beginning of his book is, is thus, by, and it's a quote by Reinhold Niebuhr, love is the motive, but justice is the instrument. And of course, then I was thinking, well, how many of us, when we hear mercy, we also remember Micah 6, 8. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. And of course, I hope when we think about mercy, we think about the example that Jesus set before us. So let's look at that. What kind of mercy does Jesus show in this passage? First, we see Matthew's call story. Matthew was going about his work as a tax collector, one of the ways that the occupied Jews could have made a living in Galilee, besides being a fisherman. And Jesus says, follow me. And he does. Pretty straightforward. But then what happens? Well, they go and they have a meal together. They sit down and break bread, and other tax collectors and sinners join them. They pour the wine. They relax and enjoy each other's company. This is how mercy is shown, through action, through acceptance, through this movement of grace at the table. Jesus ate with those who others despised and seemed to have no problem doing it. And we see the, this play out as the religious leaders scoff at Jesus for eating with the wrong people. The religious leaders were responsible for upholding purity laws in the land, guiding Jews, helping them to follow the law of what was clean and unclean. It's not what they were doing was terrible. It wasn't terrible to be following the law, the Torah. It was that they were overzealous in dictating what should be done and to who and to what and to where and how. And there were people, of course, that within these laws fell outside of them, and they just weren't being respected. They weren't being seen or loved in the way that Jesus wanted them to be loved. And it's not so different from today, is it? It's just like today, you know? Um, tax collectors were not respected in Jesus' time and place, but I'm sure we could kind of come up with all sorts of titles of people, different jobs that aren't expect, uh, respected in this time and place. And so, of course, there were in-groups, and there were out-groups, too. But Jesus wasn't as concerned about the letter of the law as he was with the spirit of the law. And this puts him in direct conflict with the religious leaders who were dedicated to following everything to a T. After he speaks with the religious leaders, we see Jesus then move on, um, and one of these men asks him and says, hey, can you please go to the house where my daughter has just died? He's really sincerely believing that Jesus will be able to help here. And so Jesus follows him, follows his thread of mercy, and goes with him. And as he's going to this household, a woman, a woman who had been bleeding for 12 years, comes up to him and touches his cloak as an act of desperation. Jesus pauses, takes the time to talk with her, for it is in the Gospel of Mark, actually, that we hear that grumblings that Jesus shouldn't waste his time talking or, you know, paying attention to an unclean woman. And Jesus provides the reassurance and the healing. Again, he shows mercy. He shows compassion. From there, he arrives at the house where the girl is thought to be dead. All was lost in the eyes of so many. But in an act of mercy, Jesus held out his hand to her and she got up. His compassion and care were evident. Yes, the miracle became the talk of the town, but I want us to pause and reflect on this act of mercy that took place in the healing itself. It's not what the folks in the village had to say about it. It's not the rumors that were spread, but that merciful encounter between a young girl and a rabbi. In each vignette, whether it's Matthew, the tax collector, the woman in desperation, of the girl who had died, all are shown compassion with no outward reason or rationale. Everyone in the story should have been left for dead, and yet Jesus 
does otherwise. The tax collector, dead to the society that is taxed by him. The bleeding woman, shunned for her poor health. She is kept in the margins of daily life because of her condition. And the dead girl, well, she was dead. Why would anyone believe otherwise? While we take instruction from Jesus willingly, at least I hope we do, it wasn't so easy for these religious leaders who wanted to maintain the status quo. I imagine they paused and maybe sucked in a breath when they heard Jesus quote from Hosea 6.6 6 in that initial encounter after calling Matthew to be a disciple, for Jesus says, go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice, for I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Those who heard his response would have known that Jesus was making a reference to the prophet Hosea from the Hebrew scriptures. They would have known that Hosea, in order to show God's love for his unfaithful people, was asked to marry and have children with one of the wrong people, a promiscuous and adulterous woman. As one commentator says, one way we can read this section of Matthew is that the Pharisees question Jesus about his association with the wrong people, to which he responds, you are worried about eating with these people. Remember Hosea? He was married to one of them. God has always been about loving the outcast. This is nothing new. Mercy is on full display, and it is, is and remains the countercultural move. It was countercultural then, and it's countercultural now. This week, I decided to watch with my kid because my kid wanted to watch the Amazon docu series Shiny Happy People. So, no, this is not a show about the band REM, which that's the lyric in their song. It's a show about the Duggar family, who was made infamous from their TLC show 19 Kids and Counting. Did any of you ever get sucked in watching that show? <laughs> I know I did. It's this fascination of one couple having so many children, more children than necessary. <clears throat> this docuseries is critical of the teachings of the fundamentalist group that the Duggar family belongs to. And now their father, Jim Bob, holds a high leadership position in this organization, which I'm not gonna name, which boasts that families must aspire to having a quiver full of children, which means lots and lots of children to populate America. I only mentioned this program because while I have been meditating on mercy this week, I had not expected mercy itself to pop up in the lexicon of virtues of this fundamentalist subculture and teaching. Here, mercy from a fundamentalist perspective was deemed as the most important attribute for godly women. A woman in their community would be called a mercy. On the other hand, men would be called prophets. That is how you would know a man to be godly. They got to prophesy, and I guess that means they got to talk a lot and make the decisions. So men in this subculture are encouraged to be patriarchs and prophets, speaking out the truth as they see it in the realms of work and family and religion. On the other hand, women are to hold fast to mercy as defined as being meek and mild, the suffering servant, the matriarch who is soft-spoken and sweet, who never lifts her voice at anyone. This framing of mercy is a way to keep women in a place of obedience and servitude, and is a way to reinforce this old notion that men have authority over women and God has authority over men. I'm sure you all have heard about that before. And as we can see in scripture today, which features a young girl believed dead and a bleeding woman, we see that Jesus expects action and empowerment of both. He expects them to become empowered. Remember, he is countercultural, expecting the life of a young girl to be valued and important and the needs of a bleeding woman to matter. He is not repulsed when she touches his cloak. The young girl gets up and the woman, while well, her faith has made her well, Jesus comes alongside both of them. He is powerful, yes, but his power is that of empowerment. It is not the power that the world gives, but the power that God gives, which has an awful lot to do with mercy. 
Remember that Reinhold Niebuhr quote, love is the motive, but justice is the instrument? Again, that is the quote that leads into Brian Stevenson's masterful work, Just Mercy. For me, the work that Stevenson has done, caring about justice, meeting with the most marginalized where they're at, in this case, in high security prisons, and taking their cases all the way to the Supreme Court is to me the kind of mercy that Jesus exemplified. It is taking the power that God gives us to rectify injustices and to make things right as participants in the kingdom of God. And in any situation where one person is subjugated under another, there is a need for liberation. Whether it is for someone wrongfully charged on death row, a woman who has bled for years and has been shunned for being unclean, or young, or young women growing up in a power structure, doesn't matter the religion. Many religions contain fundamentalist exclusivist ideals that says that they should not have access to the expansiveness of public education, or young people being told that they are not allowed to become who they know themselves to be. The need for mercy, as Jesus practiced it, it, practiced it is all the greater. As Shannon and I discussed what mercy is and how it shows up in the world, he shared with me that in Islam, one of the names for God is the most merciful, which in Arabic is al-Rahim. Oh, al-Rahim, sorry, al-Rahim. And this name is closely related to al-Rahman, another name for Allah, the most compassionate. And they both derive from the root word ramat, which refers to tenderness and benevolence. And in Hebrew, the word for mercy is Rah Amin, which refers to showing kindness to those who do not deserve it and offering forgiveness. It's interesting, isn't it, that in these three Abrahamic faiths, Judaism, Christianity, and Islam, that there would be such a deep connection to mercy. This tells me that we can have a deep and abiding connection to God through acts of mercy and being merciful and that mercy is a virtue that we need to demonstrate in our daily lives, all of us, not just those who identify as women. It seems to me that any time we claim an ism, whether it be anti-intellectualism, racism, sexism, classism, or when homophobia and xenophobia are on display, we are far afield from mercy. And just like compassion, we need to have and apply mercy for others and mercy for ourselves. For me, mercy arrives with the generosity of spirit, a purity of compassion and love. Maybe I'm an idealist, but for me, mercy cuts through all the junk of assumptions and judgment and even hatred and allows us to really see the person in front of us or to really have some self-compassion for ourselves. Mercy allows us to flex our compassion muscles and do what others might think impossible, like sitting ourselves down in a 12-step meeting, or going to therapy, or serving meals at the severe weather shelter, and inviting the story of someone we might not otherwise hear and might otherwise ignore, and allowing ourselves to hear the other side of the story, that part of the story that never gets told. It means building new tables for people to gather, tables that accommodate differing abilities and different ways of being in the world. Yes, mercy and compassion and hospitality are all connected. In Marvin Gaye's song, Mercy, Mercy Me, he broke some rules about what kinds of lyrics you're supposed to put in a song. Let's just say that he was at odds with his music label when he wrote the lyrics for Mercy, Mercy Me. And, and you might recall that this song is upbeat in tempo. It gets you swaying to the music. But underneath all that, Gay had a message in 1971 for all of us to pay attention to the earth and how to show her some mercy. And I think really it's in him calling out what was going on in 1971, which isn't really that different from what's happening now in 2023. So I'm just going to offer up his lyrics. They're streamlined for the spoken word, so I'm sure you'd love to hear me <laughs> try to sing. <laughs> I wish we could just type it through the speakers. 
So he says, whoa, mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. Where did all the blue skies go? Poison is the wind that blows from the north and south and east. Whoa, mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. Oil wasted on the ocean and upon our seas. Fish full of mercury. Oh, Jesus, yeah, mercy, mercy me. Things ain't what they used to be. Radiation underground and in the sky. Animals and birds who live nearby are dying. Hey, mercy, mercy me. Hey, things ain't what they used to be. What about this overcrowded land? How much more abuse from man can she stand? You know, it wasn't until I started preparing for the sermon that I really ever read and heard those lyrics. I've been singing them for years, but I didn't ever really hear or see what Marvin Gaye was saying. I didn't know that he was singing a hymn of mercy to the land, to Mother Earth. Marvin Gaye, through the lens of his culture and his experience, shows us one more way that mercy can be applied to the planet through art and through song. So I encourage you in this week ahead to look for the places where you can identify mercy, where you experience mercy or show or give mercy to another. It is a gift that we receive from God, a gift to be shared, and something that we are called to practice. Amen. So I invite you to stand as you are able to sing with us, there's a wideness in God's mercy. Now we've entered into that time of our worship service where we share our joys and our concerns. I don't know if we want to bring the... So it'll be on our screen here in a minute, I think. Um, some of the different activities and events that are going on in our church. So today we've got the putting together of the Church World Service hygiene uh, packs um, over there in the fellowship hall. There'll be some food. Uh, just a reminder that uh, soprano Stephanie Funds will be uh, with us in worship next Sunday, um, singing again with us. And she has a recital that will be here Saturday the 24th here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. They are all invited to attend. Um, and then we're also going to be celebrating new members joining the church next Sunday, which is pretty exciting. Um, and of course, it's Father's Day. Um, then Sunday the 25th is uh, Pride in Seattle. Um, Reverend Terry Pagan will be preaching here, which I know is a delight to so many of you that have known him and have missed him. Um, but if you want to join me and Shannon and Ian uh, for Seattle Pride, we're going to be going with the Pacific Northwest Conference of the United Church of Christ, and we will be walking in the parade. So just let me know if that's something you're interested in doing. 
Um, we'll be taking light rail uh, downtown. It'll be my first parade. My husband, I think it'll probably be your second or third, but uh, it's, it's the year to do this thing um, with, with our other area UCC churches. Also want to say that um, Aaron let me know of a really, really cool activity. Well, it's more like a concert. Um, Paramount Theater on June 18th in the evening is going to be um, doing for the second year, the Songs of Black Folk. It's a celebration for Juneteenth. Uh, we've got tickets to go um, and uh, really look at the whole um, lifespan and uh, just all the musicality in the Black church and to just go along for the ride and have a really good experience and to uh, you know, see what it is that we need to see as white folks in the celebration of Juneteenth. So if that's something that's interesting to you, I encourage you to, to look up the songs of Black folk at the Paramount. Is there anything else this morning? Um, so hot off the press, Chris from uh, the Des Moines Area Food Bank sent me a note and just wanted to make sure all of you know that Des Moines Pride is having a festival today at the Des Moines United Methodist Church. It's from 11 until 3, and it's a family-friendly friend event. Cool. Yeah, I did see that they were doing Pride worship in, in Des Moines, which is, a, I think, first for the city of Des Moines uh, this year, so... Good on the uh, UMC folk down there in the ones for, for doing that today. We still need volunteers for the summer months. So if you're inclined to uh, be a greeter or bring flowers or be the lay leader, make coffee, please go ahead and sign up on the board today. We appreciate all your help. And with that, um, we're just so grateful for your time and talent and treasure in this church. Um, our offering plate is in the back. We give in so many different ways these days. The pandemic really helped shape things up for us in that regard. So, um, you know, if you want to give something great, but we're just so grateful to all of you and your um, acts of mercy and your time of service and all that you give to the glory of God. Let us sing our offertory response. siblings in Christ let us be merciful let us be loving and compassionate whether it's that self-compassion that we need for ourselves or compassion for others so go in peace and go in love and go in joy as we celebrate the rainbow. <laughs> amen and amen.
Thank mm-hmm. you. 